Hello to all. Today we are going to study about a very very important topic related to the reproductive system and that is the female reproductive system of the human beings. This is the diagram which is indicating the female reproductive system and we must know that the female reproductive system consists of one pair of the ovaries, one pair of the oviducts, these are the one pair of the ovaries, one pair of the oviducts, one uterus, cervix, vagina. This is the uterus, cervix region with cervical canal and the vagina. Not only this, there are certain external genital organs also which we will be discussing later and the accessory glands such as the mammary glands. Once again I am repeating the female reproductive system consists of one pair of ovaries, one pair of oviducts, a uterus, cervix, vagina, external genitalia and the accessory glands. Okay. Now let's talk about the very first one that is the one pair of the ovaries. Ovaries are one pair. It is the primary female sex organ. It is the primary female sex organ. And what are the chief functions of the ovary? The ovary is having two chief functions. The number one function is it produces the female gamete. It produces the female gamete. And we all know that female gamete is called as the ovum or the egg. Means inside the ovary, what is produced, a female gamete is produced, that is known as the ovum. And the second one is that it releases, ovary releases several steroid hormones, several steroid hormones such as the ovary releases the estrogen hormone you all know it is very very important estrogen hormone and the another hormone is known as the progesterone hormone these are the two important hormones which are steroid in nature and are released by the ovary and both are very very important one later on we'll be discussing their roles that what is the role of the estrogen and what is the role of the progesterone now what is the location of the ovaries? So ovaries are located near the kidneys. Ovaries are located near the kidneys. Ovaries are located near the kidneys and remain attached to the abdominal wall. They are actually located near the kidneys and are remaining attached to the abdominal wall with the help of the ligament and that ligament is called as the mesovarium. So they are found in the lower abdominal part. Okay. Ovaries are connected to the pelvic wall. Ovaries are connected to ovaries are connected to the pelvic wall as well as to the uterus. Again, I am repeating. Ovaries are connected to pelvic wall as well as to the uterus with the help of the ligaments. And if I talk about if I talk about the size of the ovary, then each ovary is two to four centimeter is two to four centimeter in length. Okay. And if I see the structure, if I see the structure of the uh, ovary, then see here, each ovary is covered by a germinal epithelium. See, each ovary is covered by germinal epithelium and this germinal epithelium is composed of, this germinal epithelium is composed of certain cells which are cube-like. And that's why we can say it as that this germinal epithelium is composed of cubical cells. This epithelium encloses the ovarian stroma means inside the germinal epithelium the entire portion of the ovary inside the germinal epithelium the entire portion of the ovary is called as the stroma which is also called as the ovarian stroma and this ovarian stroma is divided into two portions this ovarian stroma is divided into two portions the outer one the outer one or the peripheral one is called as the cortex and the middle one and the middle one is called as the medulla is called as the medulla okay now what about the cortex cortex is very important region of the ovarian stroma cortex contain numerous spherical this cortex you are able to see that in the cortex region certain spherical or oval sac like or bag like structures are present and these structures are called as the ovarian follicles these structures are called as the ovarian follicles okay and these ovarian follicles are actually found in various stages that we'll be studying when we'll be studying the menstrual cycle and all 
will be telling you that how these uh, these uh, follicles develop very first the follicle is called as the pf means primary follicle then during the menstrual cycle the primary follicle is converted to secondary follicle secondary follicle is converted to tertiary follicle and ultimately the tertiary follicle converts into the graphene follicle what are these follicles what is a mature follicle that we will be discussing later on separately we will be discussing about the graphene follicle just now you have to just notice here that in the cortex part of the ovarian stroma certain follicles are present primary follicle secondary follicle tertiary follicle in the various growth stages and ultimately the tertiary follicle converts into the mature follicle known as the graphene follicle and this graphene follicle is actually having the ovum when the graphene follicle will burst then what will be released out ovum will be released out how the graphene follicle is formed how it bursts how uh, it releases the ovum what is the process of the ovulation that will be discussing later on okay now what about the medulla region that is the central region medulla consists of loose connective tissue medulla consists of loose connective tissue it also consists of elastic fibers it consists of blood vessels and it also consists of certain smooth muscle fibers which are found in the medulla region okay and remember this thing that there is a region known as the hilus this is the ovary this is the region known as the hilus and hilus is the region from where the blood vessels from where the blood vessels and the nerves and the nerves enter in the ovary hilus is the region from where the blood vessels as well as the nerves enter into the ovary because we must know that each and every part of the body requires the supply of the blood vessels as well as the nerves okay so just now we have discussed only the external structure of the ovary we have not discussed at all the internal structure of the ovary that is we have not discussed the follicles or any other thing okay just it is the external feature so very first we have discussed about the ovaries now we are actually discussing the oviducts that is the one pair of the oviducts now let's talk about the second part that is the fallopian tube actually fallopian tube is also called as oviduct because a duct which passes the ovum that's why called as the oviduct and fallopian tube name is given to the oviduct because there was a scientist whose, uh, whose name was Gabriel Filippio the scientist name was Gabriel Filippio who first of all discovered it that's why it is called as the fallopian tube size of each uh, size of each fallopian tube we know very well that fallopian tube is one pair this is one this is another one okay so each oviduct is 10 to 12 centimeter long and it extends from the periphery it extends from the periphery of the each ovary up to the uterus it extends from periphery of the each ovary up to the uterus and each oviduct is differentiated into how many parts three parts each oviduct is differentiated into three parts number one is infundibulum number two is ampulla number three is isthmus okay now first one infundibulum as the name is indicating it is funnel like it is like this type okay the part closure to the ovary now this part is the infundibulum and the part of the infundibulum which is closer to the ovary is funnel shaped and you know very well that funnel shape is like this type okay and at the edges and at the edges of this infundibulum certain finger like projections are present and these finger like projections are called as the fimbri and these fimbri are meant for the collection of the ovum just after the ovulation as soon as the ovulation will occur then ovary will release the ovum so these ovum will be collected by the fimbri which are the finger like projections of the infundibulum okay infundibulum opens into the abdominal cavity by an aperture called as ostium you can also say it as that the aperture of the infundibulum the aperture of the infundibulum is called as the ostium by which the infundibulum is in connection with the abdominal cavity why because the ovaries are found in the abdominal cavity so its pore its aperture is called as the ostium now if i talk about the second part if i talk about the second part of the oviduct then it is known as the ampulla infundibulum leads to means infundibulum opens into another wider part of the oviduct and that wider part of the oviduct is called as the ampulla 
so this part this part is the ampulla now coming to the third and the last part that is known as the isthmus you can see here that isthmus is the last part of the ovidum and it is the part which is connected with the uterine cavity so it is the last part of the ovidum and it has a narrow lumen means it has a narrow cavity it has a narrow cavity and it joins to the uterus see here isthmus is actually connected with the uterus now what is the function of the oviduct oviduct is involved in the conduction of the womb of course the name oviduct is given to it because it is meant for the conduction of the womb or the zygote why ovum or zygote because it's not necessary that the ovum will be definitely fertilized in the oviduct either it can pass the oviduct or if fertilization occur then the sperm will meet with the ovum and the zygote will be formed so i i want to say here that oviduct is involved in the conduction of the ovum or the fertilized egg fertilized egg is also called as the zygote towards the uterus of course it is towards the uterus by the ciliary action why because the fallopian tube because the fallopian tube is lined by the ciliated epithelium the fallopian tube is lined by ciliated epithelium and the ciliated epithelium is having the cilia and the cilia will move and this ciliary action or the movement of the cilia is very important for the conduction of the ovum or the fertilized egg known as the zygote towards the uterus and the very important thing to be noticed here is that the chief function the chief function of the oviduct in the human beings is that that in human beings internal fertilization occur and the oviduct is the site of the fertilization and the place where the fertilization occur in the oviduct is the ampulla isthmus junction if somebody ask you where does fertilization occur in the oviduct in oviduct where does specifically the fertilization occur so it occurs at the ampulla isthmus junction means at this junction at the junction of the ampulla and the isthmus what will happen the ovum and the sperm will fertilize together now coming to the third part coming to the third part which is very very important part of the female reproductive system and that is known as the uterus uterus is also called as the hystera it is also called as the womb okay and it is a large hollow it is a large hollow structure muscular highly vascular it is large hollow muscular highly vascular means having a rich supply of the blood and it is inverted pear shaped and it is inverted pear shaped structure and it is attached to the pelvic wall and it is attached to the pelvic wall with the help of the ligaments with the help of the ligaments as i have said you it is a large hollow sac like structure so its size is its size is 8 into 5 cm into 2.5 cm okay uh, in some books it may be written 3 cm so don't be confused it may vary in size 8 cm into 5 cm into 2.5 cm and it has three parts you are able to see the three parts you are able to see the three parts number one is the uterine fundus the first part is the fundus see here fundus it is the upper dome shaped part it is the upper dome shaped part above the opening of the fallopian tubes see here these are the openings of the fallopian tubes so it is present above the this is the dome shaped part known as the fundus so fundus is the upper dome shaped part which is present above the opening of the fallopian tube the second part that is the most most important part of the uterus known as the body which is also called as the corpus which is also called as the corpus it is the middle part and it is a main part and the last part this is the second part and the last part is the cervix the last part known as the cervix it is the lower narrow part of uterus it is the lower narrow part of the uterus known as the cervix and it opens in the body of the uterus see here this is the cervix it opens into the it opens into the body of the uterus see here it opens into the body of the uterus by internal os means see here one thing to be noticed here is that that cervix opens into the body of into the body of the uterus by internal os here there is internal os here there is internal os and it opens into the vagina and it opens this is the vagina 
so it opens into the vagina it opens into the vagina through the extra lois so here there are two orifices one is known as the internal lois through which the through which the uh, the cervix opens into the body of the uterus and there is a, another OS known as the external OS by which the cervix opens into the vagina okay so these are the three important parts of the uterus the fundus the body and the cervix and one thing to be noted here is that that the cavity of the cervix this the cavity of the cervix cavity of the cervix is called as the cervical canal this is the cervical canal and it is very very important this cervical canal this cervical canal along with the vaginal canal this cervical canal of the cavity of the cervix okay along with the vaginal canal forms the birth canal forms the birth canal or I can say that cervical canal along with the vaginal canal is called as the birth canal why because it is meant for the delivery of the baby it is meant for the delivery of the baby now let's have a look on the layers surrounding the layers surrounding the uterus now the uterus is surrounded by how many layers three layers see here perimetrium myometrium and endometrium the outermost one is known as the perimetrium which is membranous that is very much thin which is membranous that is thin the middle one the middle one is called as the myometrium and it is very very important it consists of the smooth muscle fibers and these smooth muscle fibers exhibit strong contraction during the delivery of the baby and hence the myometrium layer is helpful in the process of the parturition okay that is the baby birth and the most most important layer that is the inner layer known as the endometrium it is it is uh, glandular it is glandular Plus it is highly vascular, it is highly vascular and glandular and this layer is the most most important layer which is lining the which is lining the body of the which is lining the body of the or the cavity of the uterus and this layer undergoes cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle. What are these cyclical changes which are very very important that will be studying in the menstrual cycle topic okay it undergoes many cyclical changes during the uh, menstrual cycle now coming to the last part of the female reproductive system yet we have discussed the ovary we have discussed the oviduct we have discussed the uterus now coming to the last part that is known as the vagina very very important one now the uterus as we know very well that the uterus opens into an elastic or we can say it is fibromuscular tube it opens into a elastic muscular tube and that muscular tube is called as the vagina and the length of the vagina is approximately 8.5 centimeter it is approximately 8.5 centimeter and it is highly vascular tube it is highly vascular tube and internally and internally remember internally it is lined by a mucous membrane internally it is lined by a mucous membrane which is raised into transverse folds which is raised into like this type it is raised into transverse folds and these transverse folds are called as the vaginal ruggies and these vaginal ruggies are meant for the phagocytosis of uh, many of the sperms found in the semen now vagina is lined externally by vagina is lined externally by stratified squamous epithelium it is lined externally by stratified squamous epithelium and remember one thing that this vagina is devoid of any glands it does not consist of any sort of the glands and one more thing that what is chief function of the vagina that vagina is actually acting as a copulation canal during the act of the coitus or the sexual intercourse male releases the semen into the female vagina only and that's why it is called as the copulation canal and at the time of the parturition at the time of the parturition the vagina along with the cervical canal vagina along with the cervical canal act as the birth canal for the delivery of the baby not only this think of say for if this is the vagina and this is the vaginal orifice if this is the vagina and this is the vaginal orifice so just behind the vaginal orifice just behind the vaginal orifice 
there is a membrane present known as the hymen. So vaginal orifice is covered by partially by vaginal orifice is covered partially by a membranous diaphragm called as the hymen. Called as the hymen, just behind the vaginal orifice, a membrane is found, and this membrane is called as the hymen. Okay. Now this hymen is often ruptured or broken down during the first coitus or the sexual intercourse. Again, I am repeating, hymen is broken down or ruptured during the first coitus. But however, it can also be broken. It can also be broken. Scientifically, it is said that it can also be broken by a sudden fall or a jolt. It may also be broken down by insertion of a vaginal tampon to stop the menstrual flow. It can also be broken down during the active participation in the sports like horseback riding, like cycling and other sports activities. Okay. In some women, it has been seen that hymen even persists after the coitus or the sexual intercourse also. So we can say it as it is very very important line the presence or absence of the hymen in a female is not a reliable indicator of virginity is not a reliable indicator of the virginity means uh, something that if the hymen is present then the female is virgin if hymen is broken then she is not virgin it is not exactly true absence or presence of the hymen is not a reliable indicator of the virginity or the sexual experience okay so we have discussed the vagina also and now we have to discuss the last two parts one is the external genitalia external genitalia and the last part is the uh, accessory gland such as the memory gland so now let's have a look on the external genitalia now we are discussing the very important section of the female reproductive system and that is known as the external genitalia Basically, external genitalia is called as the external genitalia because these structures are found outside the body of the female and hence called as the external genitalia. And these structures in the female reproductive system are collectively called as vulva. Means this section, this entire section which I have drawn, this is called as vulva or the external genitalia. And in external genitalia, we have to discuss the mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, hymen hymen and the last one is the clitoris okay now first see the diagram this is the mons pubis area which is covered by skin and the pubic hairs and this is a fold of lip like structure this is a fold of lip like structure or a pair of lip like structure called as the labia majora inner to the labia majora is called as the labia minora and this depression like structure this depression like structure is called as the vestibule i can say this depression called as the vestibule is surrounded by labia minora and labia majora and this depression called as the vestibule consists of two openings one is the upper opening known as the urethral opening and one is the lower opening called as the vaginal opening okay and the, the labia minora, the labia minora fuse together at the upper junction, upper junction, okay, and they are called as what? A skin fold called as a prepuce and the lower and the lower region or the posterior region of the labia minora fuse to form the forechit, okay. So let's have a discussion. The first part of this vulva or the external genitalia is the mons pubis. It is a cushion of fatty tissue. Why it is called as the cushion of fatty tissue? Because it consists of because it consists of a lot of fat and hence it is called as a cushion of fatty tissue and it is covered by the skin. It is covered by the skin and the pubic hairs. So this region, this region is called as the mons pubis and the hairs present on it are called as the pubic hairs. Okay. Now the second one is called as the labia majora. Labia means lip-like structures. They are one pair or I can say one pair of fleshy fold of skin. They are fleshy folds of skin which 
extends down which extends down these are labia these are this one and this one this is called as the labia majora so these are fleshy folds of skin which extends which extends down from the mons pubis and surrounds the vaginal opening this is the vaginal opening and they are surrounding the vaginal opening okay now the next one is the labia minora inner to the labia majora are the labia minora so these are these folds these lip like structures which are found inner to which are found inner to the labia majora are the labia minora so labia minora are also one pair means they are paired folds of tissue they are pulled paired folds of tissue which are in form of which are in form of lips under the labia majora so this is what mons pubis now this is what this one and this one labia majora inside the labia majora is the labia minora okay now the fourth one the opening of the vagina c4 the opening of the vagina is called as the vaginal orifice so this opening of the vagina is often covered is often covered by a membrane by a membrane called as the hymen now it has been said that hymen is ruptured at the time of first sexual intercourse right or ruptured or it is broken down at the time of the first sexual intercourse but scientifically it is not always true it may also be broken down due to sudden jolt or fall it may also be broken down due to the insertion of the vaginal tampon to stop the menstrual flow it can also be broken down due to some active sports activity like the horse riding or the cycling or etc it has been seen that it's not necessary that the hymen uh, uh, is broken down uh, at the time of the first sexual intercourse it has been seen that even after coitus there is presence of hymen seen in some females so it has been said, said that the presence or the uh, presence or the absence of the hymen is not a reliable indicator as i have previously said it is not a reliable indicator of the virginity or the sexual experience because some say that uh, if the hymen is present the female is virgin if the hymen is uh, not there means that female is already having the sexual intercourse but this is entirely not at all true this i have already said previously also now coming to the clitoris now this is the clitoris now a tiny finger like a structure which lies at the upper junction which lies at the upper junction of the two labia minora which lies at the upper junction of the two labia minora above the urethral opening above the urethral opening as you can see in the diagram is called as the clitoris and just above the clitoris clitoris uh, is covered by a skin fold clitoris is covered by a skin fold called as the prepuce so this is the prepuce and this prepuce has a depression has a depression in front of the anus it has prepuce has a depression in front of the anus and this depression is called as the vestibule i can say that this entire area which is a depression like structure is called as a vestibule and this vestibule consists of two openings one is the urethral orifice in which the urethra opens and the lower one is called as the vaginal orifice in which the vagina opens okay and we can say that this vaginal uh, or we can say it is this vestibule is bounded by the two lip like structures known as the labia majora and the labia minora what we have discussed just now now the labia minora which were lip like structures found inner to the labia majora fuse anteriorly fuse anteriorly to form a skin fold called as a prepuce while they fuse posteriorly to form the forehead and the area which is present between the forehead and the anus is called as the perineum and in some organisms the perineum is having the perineal glands but in the human uh, in but in the human female reproductive system the perineal glands are totally absent okay and the last part of the female reproductive system is the accessory glands known as the bartholin gland and mammary gland and these two glands i will be discussing separately in a separate video 
okay so today we have discussed the entire female reproductive system in detail which is very important for the examination point of view we have discussed the one pair of the ovaries one pair of the oviducts a single uterus the cervix the vagina and the vulva so in the coming time we will be uh, we will be uploading few more videos related to the reproductive system so keep watching thanks a lot